Hi, in this tutorial slash breakdown, we'll be texturing and grooming this Fox model using Quixel Mixer, Materialize, and of course, Blender. I'll be providing my Fox model for you to work with, um, if you want to. It's got a relatively low poly count and it's UV unwrapped, so you can experiment with what you learned in this tut without uh, having to go through creating a model from scratch. So let's start by creating a simple black and white mask to delineate the main colors of the fox's fur, and we'll use this map in Mixer later on. So let's enter texture paint mode here in Blender, and we can create a new map using this plus icon here, and we can specify our resolution and confirm, and also make sure we have symmetry enabled before we get to painting. So in my case, I'll be using white to define the red areas and black for the white areas. And I suggest having some reference up somewhere as you do this and take the time you need. When we're done, let's save our map somewhere and head to Mixer. In Mixer, we can load our mesh from a new mix by going to the Setup tab. And in Model Settings here, choose Custom Mesh from the Type drop-down. And then we can load in our mesh. Quixel Mixer is especially great for working with the Megascans library, but we can just use Mixer, which is available for free, to blend maps of our own. And we'll use Materialize, which is also free, to create a set of tileable maps from a single fur image. At some point, I'll be showing how much easier it is to work with Megascans, um, in case you're considering a subscription. But remember, it's more of a nice bonus than a prerequisite. Let's go to Materialize now. And here's the main UI, and it's really quite simple to use. So the first thing we need to do is hit O to open an image of fur to use for our diffuse map. And I got this image from textures.com. You can use your own um, or, or find the same one over there. And now starting with the height map slot, let's hit create. And now we can use the equalizers here to get the level of detail we want. And hit the set as button below to confirm our tweaks. And we'll just rinse and repeat the process for each of the other maps. Uh, by the way, at points where I speed through footage, feel free to pause the video at any time to perform the steps if you're following along. So when we have our maps, we can hit Tile Maps, and this will open a new panel we can work with to make our textures repeat seamlessly across our mesh. And we'll go with the Techniques Plat as our tiling method, and this is just what I found worked better in this case. We'll go with 4096 as a resolution and now we can experiment with these parameters until we get the seamless repeating pattern. And when we're ready, we can hit Set Maps and then hit S on each of the map slots to save the maps on our drive. Back in Mixer, we'll import all our maps into a solid layer by expanding each channel on the right here and loading the respective maps. For roughness, I used the smoothness map we got from Materialize, and I inverted it to check whether the white values meant smooth and not rough, which is what we'd normally expect. I tried lowering the opacity for the displacement map to get more subtle detail, but ended up disabling it for now. Anyway, we can expand the placement tab and, and start adjusting how our textures tile across our mesh. Let's use box projection tiling for this, by the way, and adjust the scaling of our textures and rotate them to get an approximation of the fox's fur. Let's add another solid layer and deactivate all channels except albedo and choose an orange color. Then right click on the layer to add a mask stack and then add a mask component here and choose map. And here we'll add the map we painted in Blender earlier on. For the black areas on the fox's paws, ears, nose, and so on, we'll be doing the same thing as previously, or we'll use the map as a mask for a black solid layer. So it looks like we'll need to invert it, and we can adjust contrast using this range slider. At this point, we can bring our new maps into Blender, but let's have a quick look at what we can do with the Megascans library. So I'll head to my local directory and use this animal fur surface. We won't need the albedo channel for this, and we can start adjusting placement as before, 
and as you can see, we can get a good result in practically no time. So let's combine our materialized textures with the surface to get a final result. Um, but remember, you can also just combine two or more sets of fur you created from materialize. Let's export our textures now and head back to Blender. So here's our textured mesh, which we can use when the fox is farther from the camera or is moving quickly across the frame maybe. But we're going to need to add some actual fur to the model as well. So we'll start with the fur that dramatically affects the form of the fox as we see it. And so we'll start with the fur on the cheeks. So in weight paint mode, we'll add a new group, name it cheeks, and start painting weights to where we want the fur generated. It's good to make gradations in weight so that we can tell Blender not just where the fur should be, but how long it should be in a specific region or where it should clump um, or kink. Uh, but you know, the, we can save that discussion for another time. And now we can add a new particle system and assign our group to the density field in the vertex weight tab. In this case, we could also use this group to drive length or just paint a new one. Um, let's adjust the diameter, the length, and the starting number until we get something we can work with. And then in particle edit mode, we can begin grooming the fur. So again, this is really just something that takes um, trial and error. I'm just using the comb and length brushes to set the direction and changes in the length of the fur here. Um, and when we're happy, we can add children for more volume. And then it's just a matter of repeating the process for the brows, the collar of the fox, the ears, and the tail. Again, it really helps to have reference images or videos to work from. And for the fox fur material, I used a principled hair shader in direct coloring mode and plugged in my color textures. And we'll need to assign this material to each particle system. Okay, so we'll create one final group for the base fur. And in weight paint mode this time, we'll paint in areas we don't want fur on or as much fur. And in a new particle system, we'll assign this group and invert it. And that's essentially how we might texture and groom this fox model or a similar model. I'll leave it to you to refine and stage your scene uh, for the final render, but here's what I ended up with. Anyway, I hope this was informative. I know um, it was a lot packed into such a short time, but I hope you got a good overview of the workflow. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I'd also like to see what you come up with. So if you decide to share your rendered result, um, tag us on social media or leave a link in the comments here. Okay, so as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.